I have a tendency to touch the speaker. I cover it up because I use my left hand. So I'd use my right hand. Anyways, this is me, Superwoman, signing in one more time for another video. Um, so I don't have a character name for the show for CSI yet because I'm not there. Anyways, this video is for Mike Cooley of Richmond, British Columbia. This is what's transpired in my life since the six years um, that's passed since we've met. And June 28th. Um, if this is what being married to you is like, then all I can say is happy anniversary. Um, a few days late, because I remember the day you turned and walked away from me after I asked you if I could mail you those shirts. June 28th, 2005. You've had an email address that you could have um, reached me at since you were 33, since we were 33. Now, um, your parents have never given you the email address or you've never asked for the email address. I don't know, but this is what's happened because of no communication from anybody throughout all of this. Um, I am now officially, I changed it myself, Jennifer Cooley. Um, I'm living with my mom in Winnipeg till I leave Canada. This is not my house and this is not my home. And we never got to live together and I don't know where the future is going to go from here because of that. I just know that everything I want to say to you about the six years that we've never been together that I've wanted to do, that I wanted to have the time to be with you to do, was completely x-rated. And I can't say what I'm thinking about how I've been feeling for the things we never got to do these last six years on camera. I just know I have a baby and it wasn't with you. And I didn't want a baby if it wasn't with you. This isn't something I was trying to do. This is what was forced on me. So any future plans of me in a wedding dress and flower girls and all that stuff is not a reality that's gonna happen between us because she's not your baby. This isn't a baby we made together as friends, as lovers, as partners in these last six years. I'm, I'm hurt beyond words. All I know is when we met, what we were doing when we met was fun. And I wanted to have some of that fun with you without your parents or any other adults around to bother us before we decided what we wanted to do from there. Now the experience I wanted to have under those circumstances will never be the same. Can't be the same. How long I waited how much time transpired when all you had to do was come downtown and look for the girl that had no home because she didn't know where you lived to make you my boyfriend and date you or have you date me or have you get a job I didn't care if it was at Canadian Tire McDonald's Burger King it don't matter and then you take me out and you pay for the meal I never got any further than that with anyone I wasn't proposing to you when I asked you if I could send you those shirts. I do know that I regret that you didn't speak up fast enough to say, here's my actual address. That was all the difference in the world right there. Here's my actual address. You know, if you weren't interested and you changed your mind, you should have said so on the spot. Can I mail you the shirts? You turned and shrugged. You should have said, no, thanks, I'm not interested because I could have taken the last six years of my energy and my love, my excitement, my desires that I wanted with you then and through the years since then and focused them in another direction on something else. Now, I'm not saying what's going to transpire for Sarah's future is going to be bad in my life because it won't be. But um, nothing will ever give back the time with you that I've just lost that I would trade everything in this world to do all over again. You said to me in that hotel room, you're not going to make me come to Winnipeg, are you? I believed those words. I hung on them. I sat under the viaduct up the street from my hotel room after I lost my room from meeting you for six days. And I burned under the summer sun, wishing you'd come downtown and pick me up and say on the spot, you mean now? Let's go to Winnipeg now? Or, hey, did you want to come home with me? Um, 
I mean, it's just been a whirlwind for me. And then the day after that, you said you should quit. What? I won't get into details of what part of what I mean, because this is, you know, on a public channel for the world to see. But the result was not fair. And it was not an affair with you, and it wasn't what would have been beautiful. Sarah's making a mess behind me, so I'm gonna sign out from here, and uh, I don't know how long it's gonna take you to uh, communicate with your parents, to come find me, check out my YouTube page, so you can see what I'm saying to you, divorcing them. Um, you. S I was told you got into a fight with them after I mailed the shirts to the house after I phoned your dad and he said yes I could mail them there. I don't know what the fight was about, I just know that I knew the answers to everything about our lives and what our futures were meant to entail from that point on and all you had to do was write me, phone me, show up unannounced. But the mistake was definitely yours because the answer was and will be to visit me always was to leave them to leave there to come find me I won't blame this on your parents or on your mom when I asked her after two and a half years had passed what your birthday was so I could find your address for myself so I wouldn't have to change my name in order to to, to find you on my own and in another format this hasn't been fun it's been embarrassing I'm frustrated and I'm humiliated you said you could play guitar and all I've ever wanted in my entire life, divorcing fame and success and money and anything else, was, was a boyfriend that could play guitar. I spent 10 years being married to a guy that didn't deserve me in his life, to a guy I didn't want to be married to, to a guy I was afraid to leave. Because I didn't know where you were when we were 19, just out of high school. I've needed you in my life for 15 years. And it took me 10 years to find you and then you walked away and I haven't seen you since. After three days I had with you that I thought was fun. Fun I wasn't finished having, fun I wanted more of. I OD'd in the hotel room across the street from the one I met you in. Because how hurt I was and how much harder I kept going and going and going to try to erase the pain and the disappointment in my life of meeting you after all the years I spent married to somebody that wasn't you. Anyways, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about what meeting you has done to me. I don't know what to say about whether or not it was worth it. What do you think? Was it worth meeting me? I don't know how to help you find me. I don't know how to help you get to see these videos. I don't know how to get you to email me. I don't know how to get you to phone or show up. I don't know how famous I've got to go and get to be to find where you live. To get you to read your emails, to realize how simple it was. The words you had to say. Yeah. Um, if this is love, then I think it kind of sucks. Six years, uh, June 28th. Happy anniversary, honey. Don't you think um, we should consummate at some point in our future? Right. Anyways, this is um, your unofficial girlfriend, wife, as it be, signing out. Peace.